According to National Geographic, lightning strikes the Earth approximately 100 times per second or 3 billion times per year. Lightning is extremely dangerous, killing many across the world each year. Lightning can reach temperatures 5 times hotter than that of the surface of the Sun. Tedded claims that lightning density maps show that lightning typically strikes over land and very near the equator. This is due to more sunlight powering storms. Lightning in the equator region averages out to tens of flashes per square kilometer per year. With that in mind, why does one place, Lake Maracaibo, Venezuela, have a thunderstorm 260 times per year on average, with upwards of 250 strikes per square kilometer? Before we get into that, we should probably cover the history of Lake Maracaibo, also known as the lightning capital of the world, the river of fire in the sky, the Maracaibo beacon, or the never-ending storm. All of these used to describe this seemingly otherworldly phenomenon. Despite its relatively secluded nest on the coast of Venezuela, this small lake has had its fair share of history. For instance, for centuries, the indigenous people of Lake Maracaibo viewed Lake Maracaibo as a sign from the gods, naming it Rib Abba or the river of fire in the sky. The lake itself is typically illuminated for 9 hours at night due to the aforementioned lightning, which is able to be seen around 400 kilometers away. Due to its brightness, sailors have nicknamed it the Maracaibo Beacon, with many allegedly using it for navigation in the past. Furthermore, Lake Maracaibo has also changed the course of history, both directly and indirectly, as two battles have been fought on its shores. The most famous battle, led by Sir Francis Drake, English pirate and slave trader, failed spectacularly when his attempt to attack a Spanish settler colony under cover of night was spectacularly lit by the lightning of the lake, thus ruining his ambush. This later inspired the famous poem La Dragontea. A battle was also fought in 1823 in the Venezuelan War of Independence on the lake as well. Even today, the lake holds major significance, not only in research into its phenomena, but also in that it has a large oil reserve. Britannica describes the oil reserve as one of the world's richest and most centrally located petroleum producing regions, something that has caused a lot of issues with locals due to a very high amount of pollutants. So with all that said, what is it about this lake that attracts so much lightning? Before we get into Lake Maracaibo's phenomena, we are first going to have to understand the formation of storm clouds and, subsequently, lightning. Britannica describes the formation of thunderstorms as, A thunderstorm is said to develop when the atmosphere becomes unstable to vertical motion. This instability is caused when large amounts of cooler air interact with light, moist, warm air. Thus, the warm air rises to a cooler atmosphere, where the water vapor starts to condense into clouds and subsequently rain and ice. The condensation that occurs also creates thermal energy, further fueling the clouds. The formation of lightning and thunderstorms, however, is much more different than that of rain. Lightning formation is actually pretty complicated in that scientists don't 100% know how or why it occurs. As such, as a disclaimer, some things in this video may contradict some studies or become false over time. To begin, it helps to think of lightning as static electricity in a way, except this static electricity could turn you into a barbecue steak in the blink of an eye. According to the government of Canada, lightning is primarily caused by a separation of charges in the clouds with positively charged particles typically moving upwards and negatively charged particles typically moving downwards. Particles change charge based on interactions between each other, i.e. collisions. Lightning requires the presence of ice and grapnels in order to form lightning, according to NASA and a journal published in the AGU. Again, according to the government of Canada, the two competing theories as to how the charges are separated in the clouds as of now are the precipitation and convection theories. Precipitation theorists suggest differently charged particles get their charge due to size. As such, larger and more negative particles fall lower in the clouds, whereas lighter and more positive particles go to the top. Convection theory, on the other hand, suggests that updrafts, upward air currents, carry positive charges and downdrafts carry negative charges. The big flash that I've seen is called lightning discharge. Lightning discharge occurs when differences in electrical charges become strong enough. There are many different types of lightning discharge, including, but not limited to, cloud to ground, cloud to cloud, where ground to cloud lightning, and more. However, the main one, and the one most associated with lightning that will be covered, is the simple cloud-to-ground lightning. As stated before, charges accumulate with the negative charges typically being at the bottom and the positive charges typically being at the top. In all strikes, if the charges become great enough, lightning can form as air becomes ionized and conducts electricity so that the charged object can ground itself. In a cloud-to-ground strike, as opposite charges attract, a charged shadow 
as described by National Geographic, follows the cloud. In all strikes, when the difference in charges becomes great enough, a lightning seed is sent out. These seeds are called step leaders. Their motions are erratic and quick, lasting only nanoseconds. The reason why they are so erratic is currently unknown, however it is attributed to something called a space stem, which according to the AGU appear to be bright, locally warmer sections that appear ahead of a discharge channel. The charged particles of the grounds in a cloud to ground strike will also send out its own upwards leader. Once the stepped leader reaches a point of contact with the oppositely charged leader from the ground, the earth will ground the cloud. This sends a huge amount of electricity up, enough to make the landing five times hotter than the surface of the sun. The flickering of the landing is just strokes being sent up. The clap of thunder that is heard is a result of the air around the lightning becoming superheated and subsequently drastically increasing in pressure, which as a result causes large amount of air to be displaced rapidly, which causes the classic thunder noise as we know and love it. According to the government of Canada, for every one cloud to ground strike, there are approximately three to five cloud to cloud strikes. And in every cloud to ground strike, 95% of all cloud to ground strikes are from the negative strikes, which if you remember are from the lower portion of the cloud. The remaining 5% are from positive strikes. Positive strikes, which originate from the higher portion of the cloud, are much more dangerous and cause a lot more damage. So after all that, why is it that this place gets so much lightning? Well, it is really just the perfect storm of factors. Firstly, Lake Maracaibo is positioned close to the equator, which as a result allows the sun to evaporate the water better. This combined with the already warm lake of 28 to 31 Celsius allows for more moisture in the air to create clouds. Lake Maracaibo is also linked to the very warm Gulf of Venezuela, which flows in more warm water, further fueling the cloud formation. The never ending storm only really happens at night, however, despite its name, and this is due to its surrounding landscapes. You see, this is primarily due to how wind functions. According to the NOAA, wind is typically formed when warmer air, heated by its surroundings, rises above. Any surrounding air is then pulled into the space behind, thus continuing the cycle and creating the wind you feel. You see, the lake is surrounded on three sides by the Andes mountain range, which heats up quite faster than that of the lake. This, as a result, pulls all the moist air away, inhibiting the upward movement of warm air, thus disrupting storms. This is also why if a thunderstorm typically occurs during the day, it's only really around the coastal areas slash mountains. At night, however, the factors that inhibit storms reverse as the mountains cool down much faster than that of the water. This creates a breeze which flows towards the lake, which subsequently pushes up all of the warm, moisture-filled air to the higher elevations, which creates the clouds that form thunderstorms. In addition, the two high points in landing appear to be related to the weakening of the Caribbean low-level jet stream, which increases vertical shear. This is when winds go in different directions and or speeds at different heights. Vertical shear affects the movements of warm air, which inhibits thunderstorm formation. All of these aspects combined together form the iconic lightning capital of the world, the Maracaibo beacon, the never ending storm, the river of fire in the sky. Despite how terrifying the Maracaibo beacon is, it is without a doubt spectacular in its destructiveness, which is particularly why it needs to be protected. You see, in 2010, the famous landing suddenly disappeared for months with no explanation. We think now that it was a shift from an El Nino to a La Nina which caused the event, which may have been caused by extreme weather as characterized by climate change. In the end, they don't know exactly why it stopped. Despite everything, one thing is for certain. With the history, the destructiveness, and the beauty of it, the never-ending storm really is something to behold. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching this. I hope you learned something about Lake Maracaibo. I found it pretty interesting. I hope whoever watching this found this interesting. This is my first time ever really doing something like this. I mean, I'm literally using, uh, socks as a pop mic and I'm under a pile of blankets. Um, but yeah, I hope it turned out well. Hope it turned out accurate. And I'm sorry for any mispronunciations. But yeah, I would also implore for whoever's watching this to also look up Lake Maracaibo. It seems, it was really interesting to me. And I actually learned a lot about lightning in the end. But yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully this turned out well. Uh, see ya.